Hi, today I'm going to show you how to install Ansible Tower on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. So in a nutshell, I'll show you how to install our OS, how to subscribe it to a necessary channel, how to install Ansible Core, and finally how to install Ansible Tower on the top. So let's get started. Okay, first we need to log in to our account on Customer Portal. If you don't have an account, just go ahead and register. In order to download OS, you will need an active subscription or evaluation subscription. Let's have a look if I've got one. Click on subscriptions on the top. There you go. We have got Red Hat Enterprise Linux self-supported. Now let's download the actual image of RHEL. That's what we call our Linux OS. Click on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. For this demo, we need a server, latest version, x64 bit architecture. Scroll down and look for the biggest file. Red Hat Enterprise Linux binary DVD. Click download now and save ISO image. Once the download is complete, I will switch to my virtual machine and start the installation. For the sake of having a shorter video, I will fast forward some parts. Now to install RHEL, I will choose English UK. Let's click on a software selection and ensure the minimal install is selected. Open installation destination and choose your hard disk. I will also opt for automatic partitioning. Since it's a server, let's give it a host name. For example, ansibletower.nevercavic.org. Let's also set a static IP address. These settings might be different for your network. Hit save to save the config and now we can see that our VM got a static IP. Now we can begin our installation. In the meantime, let's add root password. And let's create an admin user. Once the installation is finished, we can reboot our VM and we are in. Next, I will add a DNS entry to my identity management server so that the hostname of my tower instance could be resolved on my network. Again, for, for you, this step might be different depending on what do you use for your DNS resolution or even optional if you are setting this up on your home network. Now we can open a terminal and SSH into our VM using domain name. And we are in. Next, we will have to do a few things in the OS. Register it with Red Hat Network, attach the necessary subscriptions, and update the OS. To register with RHN, let's do Subscription Manager Register. Provide your username and password. These are same credentials that you have used to access Customer Portal. And we can see we got a positive response. That system has been registered. We can verify that by going back to the Customer Portal. Click Subscriptions. Then click Systems and we can see that now our Ansible Tower has been added. Now we need to attach the subscription. To see which subscriptions are available, run subscription manager list dash dash available. Let's find our Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. I will choose subscription for virtual systems since I'm running it in a VM. Copy the pool ID. Then run subscription manager attach dash dash pool equals and paste the pool ID. We got a positive confirmation that our system has been subscribed and now we can update our OS with yum update dash y. Now we can proceed with Ansible installation. I will have the terminal and installation guide open side by side. As you can see, installation of Ansible project is a separate step from installing Ansible Tower. So first, let's start with Ansible Core. As you can see, there is some useful information about the requirements for control machine and for managed nodes. Make sure you get yourself familiar with those. 
Installing Ansible Core is an easy task. Just copy the command to enable the necessary repository. Be careful though, as it looks like there is a typo in the documentation. Now, once you have your repo enabled, just run the yum install ansible-y and that will install Ansible on your machine. We can verify that installation was successful by running ansible-test version. It will tell us which version we got installed. And just to make sure everything works fine, let's run a quick test. Ansible-m for module ping. And let's ping the local host. We get a pong response, which indicates that everything works fine. And we are ready to install Tower. Now let's install Tower. Tower requires a license. Let's go to ansible.com and click in the top right corner, Try Tower for free. There are three ways to try Tower. Tower for Linux installation using Vagrant, or you could also run it on Amazon AWS. For this demo, I will go with the first option. Just provide your details and hit download. This will trigger an email. Check your inbox and you will find an email with a link to download the tower. You can save it in your desktop for now, or alternatively, you can also find a download link in tower documentation. You should also receive an email asking whether you would like to activate your tower license. Note that the process of getting an actual license is not instant and it might take Red Hat a couple of days to fulfill your request. You have two trial options, full features, unlimited number of nodes, supported but for limited time, I think it's for 30 days. Another option is with limited features, limited number of nodes, no support but it will not expire. So that's the option I'm going to choose. I have already uh, got a license, so I'm not going to submit a request again. After submitting a request, you will receive another email with your license key that will look like this. Save attached text file on your desktop, which you will need later on. Now that we have our OS installed, along with Ansible Core and we have obtained a license, we are ready to install the tower. Let's have a look at Ansible Tower documentation. Make sure to check all the requirements and prerequisites. We can see that there could be various different scenarios. You could install Tower Clustered, load, load Balanced, using Amazon or Vagrant. For this demo, we will just perform standard installation. Let's switch to Terminal and see what's our path. Let's change the directory and create a folder Ansible. Now let's download the Tower. Or you could also use the package we have downloaded earlier. Looks like we need to install get. Okay, so now we are good to go. Tower has been downloaded. Now let's copy command from the documents to unzip the package and cd into the new directory. Now let's have a look at the documentation to see what do we need to do next. We are interested in the section that says for all standard installations. And it looks like the only thing we need to do is to edit the inventory file. Let's add passwords. Admin password is going to be used to access tower. I will set the same password for PostgreSQL database and for RabbitMQ. Let's save the file and exit. Let's have a look if we need to do anything else. And it looks that we are good to go ahead and run the setup script. After installation is complete, we can see we have failed zero, which should indicate that everything went well. My installation was fast forwarded. In the real time, it can look as if it's stuck, 
but just be patient, it's doing its job and eventually it will get installed. Now that we have installation part out of the way, let's try and access our tower. Now I'm switching to my browser, let's go to ansibletower.nevakevic.org. Let's accept the TLS certificate and there is a welcome screen. Let's log in. And the next step is to upload the license text file. Submit and we are in. Let's look around a bit. We have a demo project. Let's update it. We can see the update was successful. In the template section, we have a demo template. Which basically does hello world. Let's go ahead and run that. and it was successful. I hope this video was helpful. I will share the links I've used in the video below in the description and thanks for watching.